Hello again. I don't think that I shall surprise anybody when I say that I think that men and women are different, not only physically, but also mentally, spiritually, if you like. Nor do I think that regular viewers of this channel will be startled to learn that I'm a great fan of Nietzsche. In chapter 18 of Thus Spake Zarathustra, Nietzsche writes that all of woman's a riddle, and the answer to that riddle is always pregnancy. My experience tends to confirm this. I'm not, of course, saying that women are less intelligent than men, or that they're not capable of doing almost all the things that men do. It would be absurd to claim such a thing. I do not believe for a moment that women are not able to compete with men at the highest intellectual level and to fly fighter jets, dig ditches, heave coal or do anything else which men can do. The question is, though, do these things bring them more fulfilment than childbirth and the rearing of children? Girls at school today are educated and one might almost say indoctrinated into the idea that marriage and children are a poor second best to attending university and having a glittering career. A woman who marries young and has children in her early 20s, staying at home to look after them, is viewed in many quarters as a failure. Indeed, having children at all at any age is becoming to be thought of as a dead end for women and that they can have satisfying and fulfilling lives without being mothers. This trend is very noticeable in modern Britain. It's on the increase. Women uh, choosing not to have children is definitely becoming a particular thing now. It runs counter to all that we know of the past, going back at least 3,000 years, when childlessness was regarded as a terrible curse for a woman. We read in scripture, for instance, of Hannah, the uh, mother of the prophet Samuel, who could not have children and how she suffered. It will probably be recalled by um, those who are the slightest bit religious that Hannah was married to Elkanah, who had a second wife, Penina, who did have plenty of children and used to torment Hannah because of this. Fortunately, praying at Shiloh sorted out that problem. Both Abraham's wife Sarah and also the mother of John the Baptist were similarly afflicted. It is only in recent years that women have been able to make a conscious choice to remain childless through contraception and abortion as opposed to chastity. And as I say, many of them are now making childlessness a lifestyle choice, a conscious decision never to become mothers. I have my own opinion on this matter, which, as I am sure some will guess, is horribly old-fashioned, in fact, downright reactionary. And it is that the fulfilment which pregnancy and childbirth brings to a woman is not only likely to bring them a thousand times greater joy than any career could, but is also something which men do not really get, by and large. I think that bearing children is the greatest and most noble act that women can undertake, and that it is also part of the natural order, which has now been destroyed in the West. This is an instinctive feeling, and I may, of course, be quite wrong about it. I am especially interested to know what women watching this think, and whether they feel that I am either mistaken, or indeed a dozy old fossil living in the past holding such a view.